Hello, I am Aloy Andalus from Effective TDs, and this is the presentation of a Storm. Storm is a granular solver we distribute on Effective TDs. It has been developed by Sebastian Schaeffer, that has been working on this tool for over five years. Sebastian, uh, before, write multiple tools. He has been working with us on a scanline for some years, and before he worked on Pixomondo, where he wrote over seven, eight years ago, he wrote the first SPH solver for thinking particles, way before TP5 or 6, I think. Uh, so he has a lot of experience with solvers. We think that the storm is really great and this is a first tutorial to show how things work. You have a complete demo version. I encourage to everyone that wants to try a storm, download the demo version. It's complete version. There is no restriction of time or amount of particles or everything. The only restriction that we had is that we, you cannot save the files and you will not be able to save the PRTs to export it to another application, but you can play as much as you want with the main tool. So please feel free to download, to try and post your questions on effectivetds.com uh, forum. So that's the that's the storm, the main uh, windows. Uh, to move around, it's exactly the same as in Maya. You have Alt and with left click, middle click and right click, you do the common options of pan, zoom and move. Let's start creating something. So first you will create a system. You have two options right now. Let's add a granular system. Uh, Storm right now is a, is a granular solver, but we want to be much more. And that depends of if people is interested on, but there is already an SPH coming. It needs to be reworked. So we take it out from the first release because we want it to be very robust and the SPH is not totally there, but the granular system works perfectly fine. So let's add a granular system and here automatically you will have the common parameters for your granular, um, like a stiffness, plasticity, friction, all this stuff. You can control it for, from here. It's important that you select the selection. Selection is displaying all the objects that you have on your scene. Now, if you want to add uh, we need an emitter, an emitter, so let's select granular particle system and let's add a source. Automatically we add a source that is linked to this granular particle system. You can select it by clicking it. And to move things it works exactly as in Max, double B to move. You will see that here you have these three axes to move around. E to rotate. It doesn't change right now the gizmo, but now if you press E, and you select any axis, you will be able to rotate that on this axis. Another thing that you can do is instead of selecting directly the axis, now when it's selected, it's yellow, the axis. You can as well press middle button and move. And you will be able to execute the same without needing to press your, uh, your object. And you have options here like size, speeds, uh, rate multiplier, multiple things and we will be emitting from a plane. So if we want to start emitting, simply press a space. And we have here um, our granular system being generated. Let's check right now, we can stop it. You can you have information like frames, frames per second, substeps. If you wonder what are this timeline, you have here the, the frame. And on global settings, you will have the start frame and the end frame, and you can set up this at the beginning. As well, the point size, you can see on the viewport how big you want that. Uh, it's super fast, um, the display, you can work with millions of particles and there is no problem. And as well, let's restart that. Another cool thing is that if you press, you select your object and you move it, you can move in real time and it will reevaluate so even with the flectors and everything you can you can move objects and and it will interact in real time one thing that i want to note is that right now when we move this is in local space the axis if you want to go back to wall space you can press shift and double b and you will be on wall space there is a lot of shortcuts on on these settings let's do more stuff if you go back you will see that right now this is not cache. So if you go back, nothing happened. That, why is that? You need to go to file. First, it's important to save your scene. Right now, it's not safe on any place. 
let's save as um, I will save it whatever on desktop storm test and let's go back to preference on preference we have the number of threads automatically detects the maximum number of threads that is in your CPU on my CPU I have eight threads but I keep two for the recording so we try that with machines with 20 threads scale very well storm and it's multi-thread so it will use as many threads as you have but sometimes it as any simulator tool it has more trouble sending information to every thread so sometimes it's more efficient to uh, have only eight even if you have 20 threads available cool thing is that even while you are simulating you can change this number of threads on the fly so there is no problem um, Storm as well has the option to create a play blast. If you select that, it will uh, save image of your um, of your screen, so you will be able to review what you simulate. Pretty cool. And as well, you have two formats to export. You have PRT and bin. Simply select that, and it will create a folder on this with the same name of your scene. So if you version up your um, your scene, you will have a new PRT folder created. We use PRT because it's kind of the default right now, works very well, you can add magma flow on top to manipulate your data, and we have, uh, you can export to whatever application right now, PRT, you can download for free the demo and you will be able to import into Max, and we have it for Max, Maya, and Cinema 4D, and as well, Bean, you can, Bean is a format of real flow, and you can download the Bean importer for free for any application, so you will be able to import this on any application without paying anything extra. And that's all what you need to do. Now, if we restart that, we press space, right now, automatically, we are simulating and saving the, the PRT cache. You will notice that, because if we stop this, and we go back, now we actually see what we are simulating. Uh, let's do more things. Let's change this object for a 3D object. Right now it's a plane. You can import OBJs and SD files. To do so, you can do change object with the source select selected. Um, sorry, source, change object. By default, installation folder you will have some geo that are some obj so from your main application you can uh, export obj's for um, not animating objects or sd files sd files is also a file format from real flow uh, you can download for free the exporter and you will be able to export from your main applications as well max maya blender cinema 4d uh, you can write sd files with this and you can it's pretty cool because it's light and it supports any deformation. So right now I will import an OBJ. Let's say that I want a box. This will transform as a box. If you restart now and press space, we are emitting from, from the volume. Let's say that we don't want to emit as a stream. We only want to emit it once. To do that, on the source now automatically change to volume you have single shot frame single shot frame if you have it at minus one it's a way to say that it will keep emitting over time if we want to force it to only one frame simply select the frame uh, right now our simulation starts at frame 1001 so clicking at 1001 we only simulate once there is no menus in a storm right now but it's very fast to change between options anytime that you have an option between using your numpad like if we select one we go to mesh two we will go to volume three we go to plane so anytime that you s you will see a drop uh, down menu you have to do it with your your number pad more things that we can do let's increase the resolution of that to do that you have to go on global settings uh, sorry uh, in granular particle system you have your resolution so if we increase that to 50 now let's hit restart and re-simulate again with a space we have a higher resolution it's not very easy to see because our um, point size is very big let's reduce it we can see now that it's way higher res as well another thing that we can do with the source 
we can increase these dimensions and it's kind of easy with a um, with a storm you can select multiple elements like let's select these three elements and changing it once it will change for all the dimensions i wish that 3 ds max has something like that and here it's very easy to do hitting restart and pressing a space now we have a very high res object this will take an, a while to evaluate uh, let's decrease a little the resolution only for the purpose of this test i will go something like 30 let's do it at 20 i don't want to be i want to be fast we can see like here it's breaking so now let's see some options that we have to change the behavior of that and as well let's add a deflector it will be a little more interesting to add a deflector we need to select also our solver that it's our granular particle system and let's add a collider it can be whatever let's add a torus and let's move it so well let's do this a little bigger and let's change some parameters we have the stiffness stiffness is how strong are the connections between the particles we have options like plasticiness slushiness what i can show you is like if we decrease these values it will break way easier let's see it's easier to break maybe not we can do it even easier than that It's not breaking as well because there is not so much velocity there you can set change the velocity on your source you have this speed multiplier let's add it to five so it will throw it faster now we can see it and we can see that it breaks very easily uh, some cool thing to note is that we can with plus and minus you can increase or decrease the axis and you can keep moving that in real time right now we don't have any way to animate this inside a uh, storm you can import animations and it will work for sure but these values are not animated over time but one thing that you can do is to simply change it as you wish because if we keep changing now these values of the strength of our granular particle systems as you can see it reacts perfectly fine in real time So now we see how we can break it easier. Let's go to our particle systems. We can even do it that it breaks. It almost disintegrate. Doing it. It breaks with more individual elements. And another value that you can touch a lot to have re different results as you saw this defines how strange are the connections so how easy it will break but also we have constraints maximum stretch so it says how much the particles can stretch before they break the constraint so if we go to a high values like 1.6 or 2 it means that the particles can move way more between them before breaking so it create a very stretchy rubber material that can be cool for a lot of things and as well here you can see if you move it very fast it's real time so you will break it in multiple objects but if you move it slowly you can interactively play with your your sim when you see things like that it's exploding your object it means that it needs more subsamples right now we are playing with very uh, low subsamples you can change that on a granular particle system on substeps uh, if you see something that it's exploding because you have a huge resolution or objects very fast consider increasing iterations or substeps this will fix any problem that you can have 
And for an introduction tutorial, I think that we cover quite a lot of things. There is much more to do, but we can see that on a more advanced tutorial. You have options to create, not create constraints from the beginning. Uh, you can create multiple, multiple source, so you can have two objects breaking one to the other. You can have multiple granular particle systems in a storm. And we can see as well ways to import this back to your main application to render that. But I hope that you like it. If you have any questions, please feel free to enter on effectivetds.com slash forum. We will have a section for storm. So any questions that you have, you can answer ask there and we will be there trying to answer all, all your questions. Thank you so much and have fun with the tool.